Eric listened to the clackling of keys on the keyboard. Each minute made him more anxious. The nervousness coiled up in his stomach and twisted something deep inside him. He waited to get up and interrupt Jessica, but he knew that doing that would only set her back. He tried to focus on other things, but each pause in the cadence piqued his attention. He wondered if Jessica had finished writing for the night, or if something worse had happened. That she had hit that familiar wall known as writer's block. He tried to wait patiently, but it eventually became too much. Eric sat up from the couch and stretched. He had been on that couch for hours waiting for her to finish writing for the day. He snuffed out the fifth cigarette that he had had that day and the already overloaded ashtray. He slowly moved over to her and asked, How's it coming? Jessica blew out a sigh that told him everything he needed to know in that moment. It was not going well. The computer screen confirmed that for him. She had been at the computer for most of that Saturday, and she had barely written more than a paragraph. She would write a paragraph, pause to read it to herself, and then delete it. She would inch through, but nothing was satisfactory to her. When Jessica started writing months ago and asked for his opinion, he had just humored her and thumbed through the pages of her manuscript that she had printed out, not really reading them. He offered her platitudes and overgeneralized advice to keep her from realizing that he wasn't actually reading them, but something changed about a month ago. He couldn't even begin to explain what turn of phrase or play on words first caught his attention. But once it had him, it didn't let go. He plowed through 50 pages in a single day. He had to find out what happened next. It became a process for him. Eric would pick her up from work each day and fish to see if she'd come up with anything new for the story. They would eat dinner and discuss ideas for the plot. It quickly became all that they ever talked about. They stopped visiting with their friends and going out entirely other than to pick up food and go to their respective jobs. Every night, he would wait for her to finish so that he could hungrily tear through the new plot developments and character progressions that she had come up with. At first, progress was quick. Jessica was about 100 pages into the novel, and it always seemed like she had new ideas and things for characters to say. It wasn't until two weeks ago that her progress began to slow. She was suddenly more reserved about her ideas, and the ones she did pitch to him seemed pretty generic. The sudden influx of five pages a day trickled down to three, and then to one. And now he was lucky if she could even finish a paragraph in one sitting. With nothing else to talk about, they stopped talking altogether. It didn't take an insightful person to see that they were not good as a couple. Jessica was not really his type anymore, and Eric knew that anything he gave her was skin deep. She had a tendency to needle him with comments, and he tends to overlook her feelings when they were weighted about his. Even their lovemaking was perfunctionatory and romanceless. It was once comfortable, but now it was only worn out. They had started dating after college, and either never really found the motivation to break it off. With these conditions, their toxic relationship preserved and shambled on. Jessica poked holes in him, and Eric neglected her emotions. He tried his best to sound convincing, but keep writing. You just have to plow through. I'm tired. Can't we just go to bed? A spark of frustration flared up inside him. They had gone to bed without any real progress for a few days now, and that was something he didn't want to become a habit. He wanted her to finish it and give the novel a satisfying conclusion for all the characters. Keep going. Wait, we, we can go to bed once you're finished with this chapter. I want to see how this section ends. I'm just not feeling in the mood to write right now. Let's take a break. A night ago, Eric had a dream about tying her to the chair in front of the computer for a few days. He would leave her arms free, of course. He still wanted her to be able to type. He would simply use up a few rolls of duct tape around her torso and legs to keep her pinned to the chair. He imagined how easy it would be to call work, tell them that they were taking a vacation to visit an imaginary sick relative. He could gag her if the need arose. He would keep her tied up until she finished writing. He'd have to throw out the clothes she soiled in the process and tear up the carpeting, but the story would finally be finished. Instead of waiting for months, she could finish it in a few days. He would feed her. He wasn't cruel. On second thought, maybe he wouldn't. Maybe that was the incentive she needed to keep going. His focus was broken by Jessica. Hey, are you listening? Don't tell me you've gone all Rain Man on me. We got all of Sunday, so let's, let's call it for the night and start fresh tomorrow. Eric clenched his teeth. She knew his brother was autistic. 
Now she was just trying to press his buttons. He wouldn't give her the satisfaction of hitting her again. The last time he did, she looked at him with a twisted and triumphant look plastered on her face. He apologized profusely, but she still kept that sick smirk. She knew she'd won the argument by making him strike her. She had hobbled him by making him act like his father, someone he never wanted to be. He would not give her that satisfaction twice. He calmed himself down before answering, No. You can't force me to keep typing. The empathy was sudden and settled on Eric like a 500 pound weight. Judging by Jessica's reaction, she had just had the same realization. She tried to move around him, but he blocked her path. She tried to push through him, but he pinned her feet. Her anger exploded and she shouted at him. Both Eric and the neighbors were used to that by now. They, they fought more and more each day. It was commonplace. It was a sad, accepted fact by the neighbors. They kept themselves and expected the shouting to die out. What happened next, however, was not expected. Jessica clawed out and caught Eric off guard. She raked her nails down his face and drew blood. She used his shock to quickly slip by him and run towards the bathroom. He recovered quickly and caught her around the waist before she could lock herself in. He pulled her back into the living room and threw her against the nearby wall. She tried to get up, but he pinned her down. In the truest expression of their relationship, she snarled at him. Did your father teach you how to do that? Of course he did. Your whole family is fucked to the core. First he squirts a retard into your mother, and then he makes an even bigger failure with you. At least he could make a kid. You're probably the reason why we couldn't conceive in the first place. You're the reason why the therapist advised me to start writing and keep my mind off the miscar- In the most honest moment of their relationship, Eric shut her up. He pulled a nearby letter opener off the table and drove it into her chest. The moment took them by surprise, but he recovered fast. Whilst in the moment, he muffled her mouth with his left hand and began repeatedly stabbing her in the chest. He kept going until the realization of what he was doing brought him back from the darkness. But it was too late. Eric scrambled off of her and dropped the letter opener onto the rug. Looking over her, he noticed that he had stabbed her over half a dozen times in his rage. He felt bile rising up in his throat, but he swallowed it back down. Jessica gasped weakly through the broken ribs and lacerated lungs. Any strength she had was stripped from her during the attack. Eric stroked the side of her face and in his desperation asked her, How does the story end? Jessica coughed up a small burble of blood in an attempt at a wry laugh. Does it? It never ends. I could write for years and never finish it. It's fitting for us. We only tread water in this relationship. We're, we're terrible for each other. We both know it. We've been dragging each other down for a long time now. Eric shut her up again. Once Eric was certain that she was dead, he stood up. He left the edge of the letter opener on the hollow of her throat. He quickly moved across the room and returned to the computer. He only had a little bit of time. If he was lucky, his neighbors would assume it was another one of their squabbles and not investigate. Her work would be much harder to convince. He could tell them that they were taking a few days off to visit a fabricated family member, but they would eventually grow suspicious. He had a week at tops before they started asking questions that he couldn't answer. He sat at the computer and looked at the screen. Maybe, maybe he could finish the story himself. He began typing. A few hours later, he noticed that the sun had risen. The blood from his hands stuck on the keys after they had dried. But he continued typing. He became aware of the smell a few hours after that. Jessica had evacuated when she had died, but he didn't have the time to try to clean up the mess. He only had a few days, at best, before someone was sent to investigate. He kept typing. The dull sensation of pain that began in his lower back slowly snaked its way up to his torso. It hurt to stay sitting, but he couldn't stop. He kept typing. Words clumsily spilled onto the screen and lay there heart-wrenchingly like a stillborn child. He kept typing. Days passed. He didn't stop. The telephone rang. He ignored it. He knew nothing good would come from answering it. He kept typing. The seat of the chair was soaked with sweat. A few other things that he didn't want to think about. Thinking about them distracted him. 
He kept typing. The smell now was unbearable, and the pain radiating along his body like someone was constantly tearing into him with their nails. He kept typing. He looked up when he heard a knock at the door. He looked back down and kept typing. The knocks grew louder and were now accompanied by shouting. He kept typing. He heard the police throwing themselves against the door, but he kept typing. The door protested with a groan, but it would eventually relent. He kept typing. Hey there, everyone who's listening on YouTube, or those of you who are listening on the podcast. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and before you head out for the night, I just wanted to let you know about a couple of things. Without you, the show doesn't take place. So, if you guys would like to support the show, or if you guys would like to get your hands on a couple of cool little things whenever new things come out, check out patreon.com slash Mr. Creepypasta, and any support that you guys show, I really appreciate it. So everyone who's already donated to the Patreon, I really appreciate it. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for that. If you guys are looking for more Creepypasta Storytime, there's a new video that's uploaded to this channel or uploaded to the podcast every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday now. You can be able to get more from me at facebook.com slash mrcreepypasta or on Twitter at mrcreepypasta and then the number zero. Thanks so much for listening, kids, and for your support. And sweet dreams.